In this video, I'm going to be talking about how to press in a 4-2-3-1 defensive shape. To start with, the team in red are in a 4-2-3-1 playing in a zonal marking system. If you don't know what zonal marking is or how to implement that in your team, please check out my previous video that discusses the topic. So in our 4-2-3-1 press, the main defenders who are going to be responsible for pressing are going to be the five midfielders, the two holding midfielders, three attacking midfielders, and the forward, number nine. The four defenders, while involved in some parts of the press, are mostly going to be there zonally as the back line. So our press is going to be based on the simple principle of pressure cover balance. This is a very well-known and well-discussed topic in soccer. So the first part of pressure cover balance is pressure. So in our pressing system here in a 4-2-3-1, the pressuring defender is the closest player to the ball. So in this situation, the closest player to the ball is the, is the number nine. So the number nine will apply pressure to the ball. The basics of applying pressure to the ball is that you wanna be controlled in the way you apply pressure and get close enough to slow down the defender and make him put his head down so he can't pick out an easy pass or dribble into space. The second part of being the pressure defender is to come at an angle that forces the player on the ball into an overload for our team. What that means is we want our forward to be coming at an angle so that when the player with the ball tries to play, he is encouraged to go into more defenders. So before the number nine that we saw went and pressured straight on, but this time he'll come at an angle. Very small difference, but from here, now the number five will have a very tough time trying to play across to this side of the field and will be more encouraged to just stay on the left side. The second part of pressure cover balance is the covering defenders. The covering defenders are the closest defenders to the pressure defender. So in this case, that would be our number 10 and our number 7. The role of the covering defender is two parts. Number one is to deny the short and easy options for the player on the ball. So in this case, the easy option for the number 5 is just to play a straight pass here to number 6. So our closest covering defender, our number 7, will shift over to deny this. Remember, our number 10 is also a covering defender in this situation. So he will come over to help cover another short option, and he will take up the number six and allow our number seven to shift over and cover the three. So now we have our number nine forcing the play to this side of the field, and we have covered the two quick, easy options for the player on the ball. The second part of being the covering defender is to be close enough to the pressuring defender so that if the pressure defender gets beat, the covering defender can then become the new pressure defender. So if the blue five was to beat our forward, number nine pressing, our number 10 or our number seven would then become the pressure defender. So if the number five beat the number nine by coming this way, the closest player to the ball is now our number seven. If the number five beat our forward by dribbling straight past him, now our number 10 is the closest defender and he will become the pressure defender. The third and final role of pressure cover balance is the balancing defenders. In this case, the balancing defenders in our press are gonna be the rest of our midfielders. So our number 11, our number six, and our number eight. The role of the balancing defender is to then cover the gaps that are in between the pressure and covering defenders. So in this situation, you can see that there's still a pretty big gap in between our two covered defenders, our number seven and our number 10. And a pass could easily come from the number five into the number 11. One option that some coaches may choose is to step their fullback out of defense to cover this pass instead. However, as I said before, we want our back four playing as zonally as possible and not stepping out if it's unnecessary. So instead of having the right back come out in this situation, we'll use one of our balanced defenders, the closest one being the number eight, a holding midfielder, to step across into this gap and cover this passing lane in between our seven and our 10. This allows the right back to stay in the back four and help defend the back line. On the other side, now we have our remaining two balanced defenders. We also have a passing lane here in between our nine and our 10. So our number six being the next closest balancing defender to that passing lane will come across to cover that gap. Instead of just covering the middle of this gap, he is responsible for covering the most dangerous part of the gap. So since there is a blue number 10 in between here, the number six is responsible for dropping deeper onto that option. If this number 10 were over or somewhere else, this number six is free to be more aggressive in this gap and step higher. So because the number 10 is here, then the number six must cover him. The final remaining balanced defender is our number 11 on the opposite side. His responsibility then in this situation is just to make sure that 
he is covering the far side of the field in case any big switch of play would happen. So he can shift a little bit across, but we don't want him to be too aggressive in case there is a big switch of play out to the right side here for blue. So if this press were broken a little bit and a pass did make it through into a holding midfielder like this, let's now go through how we would recover into this situation. The closest player to the ball is our number 11. So he is now the pressuring defender. So he will step to the ball in a controlled way in order to not allow the blue number eight much time or space with the ball. Remember that we wanna press from an angle that forces the player on the ball into an overload for us defensively. So the number 11 should not come and pressure him out to the right side, even though this means there's less space if he's pressuring him to this side. All of our players from our press before are on this side of the field. So we want to force him into playing into our overload. So he will press from this side instead. Next, our covering defenders are the closest players. So it's number six, number 10, and then number nine. The number six being the closest covering defender will cover the closest and easiest option which is the number 10. Another covering defender in this situation could be the left fullback. Because we have been played out on this side of the field and we don't have very many defenders on this side, remember that one of the roles of the covering defender is if the, if the pressuring defender gets beat the covering defender becomes a new pressuring defender. So let's say this number 8 beat the number 11 to the outside now we have nobody close enough by to become the new pressuring defender from the midfield. So this number three is really a covering defender because he would be then stepping out to defend, become the new pressure defender. So in this situation, this number three is really a covering defender and is covering the short option here of the number seven on this side, even though our number 11 is forcing them away, and is also on this side in case the number eight beats our 11 to the outside. The next two closest covering defenders are our forward and our at center attacking midfielder are number 10. So while all pretty much all of the close and short options are shut down, these covering defenders then have to be responsible for the second part of being a covering defender, which is if the if the pressuring defender gets beat, the, that's their responsibility. So the number 9 and 10 will come over in case the number 8 would get away from our pressuring defender by dribbling towards the inside. Now our balancing defenders would be the two remaining midfielders on the far side of the field. Remember the first role of the balancing defender is to cover any passing lanes in between the pressure and covering defenders. So the first passing lane that is closest by to, a to one of the, these two balancing defenders is this gap here in between our 10 and our six or two covering defenders. So the number eight will come across to cover this gap. The next passing lane that is open in between two covering defenders is between our nine and our 10. So our number seven will step across into that gap to provide balance. And finally, remember our back line is in a zonal system. So they're shifting with the ball across the field. So they will shift across here. Their main responsibility is just defending this back line at any balls that might get played over the top. I hope all this has made sense as to how to press in a 4-2-3-1 system and how to cover all passing lanes and gaps. Thank you for watching and please leave any feedback in the comments.